Do you have those moments that stick out in your mind? Coming from Timberline Studios, the Red Lantern looks to combine wilderness survival with the training of a team of sled dogs. But is this one hound picked or have they really screwed the pooch? <laughs> Let's find out. Hi, I'm supposed to achieve great things. You begin the story playing as the unnamed lead female protagonist, driving alongside her solo husky dog on her way to adopt more. There are dialogue options, but generally she just speaks to herself. Oh, we're getting so close to a complete team. Okay, we've got a few more stops left and we only need one more pop. Which she does for the vast majority of the game. And one of your first choices in the title is choosing which dogs you wish to adopt, of which there are eight in total, each with their own personalities. I can see that. I said running alone wasn't enough for you. Incidentally, the choices you make will affect the abilities of the dogs, with some of them able to defend you, while others may have better tracking skills. But really, you just choose the ones that look the cutest. <laughs> At least that was my strategy. Once you've chosen five different dogs, the adventure begins in earnest. The story surrounds a relative who has left you her property, which is situated on the far side of the Alaskan wilderness. And to get there, she decides to enter the Iditarod Trail Sled Dog Race, which is a 938 mile long race that takes place in early March from Anchorage to Nome in the state of Alaska. Now, in terms of the gameplay, it describes itself as a roguelite survival adventure, but it plays out a little bit more like the old Oregon Trail games, whereby, yes, you're moving from point A to point B, and as you go along, there are different instances that take place. A meal, pups. The first thing you're going to want to know is you don't actually have direct control of your sled. The dogs will simply run automatically. You can lean from side to side if you want, but it doesn't change their direction. You'll reach distance markers upon which you'll drop an energy point from yourself and the dog's paw, which is shown over here. Essentially, if these go too low, then you lose. I'm on. I'm feeling a little weak. You can camp at any time, and from within the camp, you'll need to burn pieces of birch bark in order to start a fire to eat the food that you've got, feeding yourself and the dogs independently. If you can't start a fire because you've run out of birch bark, then you'll need to eat the frozen meat itself, which will reduce your body temperature, meaning that every mile marker you pass will reduce your team's endurance points by two rather than one. The same goes for a lack of sleep. If you allow your party to get fatigued, then each marker they pass will again increase the amount of lost stamina. As mentioned, as you progress, you'll run into instances. These can range from animals crossing your path and then you choosing what to do. You're making this feel really personal to investigating abandoned lodges and even following different wildlife. While the instances are nice distractions, there's a bit of an RNG, random number generator feel to the game, whereby depending on exactly what instances you get and the outcome of these, which is seemingly for the most part out of your control, one run can become a bit of a disaster rather quickly. Thankfully, due to its roguelike nature, there are some permanent upgrades that take place as you explore the wilderness. One of the earliest being the flint and steel, which enables you to make fires whenever you want. This is useful because it means you don't have to use the collected birch bark, which is finite, to light your fires and you no longer have to worry about getting cold. The same applies to the axe, fishing rod and animal trap, all of which gradually make it easier each time you go on a run. The problem I found though is that these weren't exactly essential. Due to its slightly randomised nature, you could quite easily finish the game in about an hour, maybe hour and a half. And although I enjoyed the story element of the game, with that lead character narrating as she goes, Marvel was never the best racer, but she did it because it's what she loved. Unfortunately, after a few runs, you hear the same lines of dialogue over and over again, and they begin to get a little tedious. For me, I would have much preferred to have full control in an open world, with the encounters perhaps still happening randomly, but the on-rails nature of it isn't going to appeal to everyone. I did still enjoy it, which is quite strange, but I think that was more as a result of the visuals and the audio, and its generally relaxing pace. You can bring up a map, and as mentioned, you get to choose occasionally whether you go left or right, but the bearing this has on the world seems to be negligible. The best part of the game really comes when you finish a run and you're shown all the different unlocks that you've managed to achieve in this scrapbook. And there are small story arcs attached to each of your dogs, which is a cool little touch. You can also pet and stroke them. And if they get injured, you'll need to use med kits to heal them as well as yourself. While I would have preferred a bit more control, it is still quite an enjoyable game trying to make the right decisions to give yourself enough resources to reach the other side of the map. In hindsight, it really does bear a great resemblance 
equivalent to many board games, as so much of the outcome depends on the turn of a card, and it feels similar here. Gameplay scores 14 out of 20, and the controls were a little bit lacking for me. I would have liked more direct control of all my actions, rather than a one button press for fishing, shooting, and no buttons for riding the sled. It's not that the controls are bad, and I get that it's a resource management title. It was just a touch too hands off. Controls score 12 out of 20. Onto visuals and performance, as well as audio then. Visually, the game looks splendid. It looks absolutely lovely. There's real-time shadows rendered from your character. The animations, as well as the lighting, are on point. The textures are nice and crispy in the areas that matter, things like the sky, whereas they go for a more low-res look on the landscape and terrain. It creates a nice contrast, and the game runs well enough as well. For the most part, you're looking at 30 FPS. There are the occasional dips down. But I found that in handheld as well, it held up nicely. The original soundtrack is decent, although there are a couple of audio loops which were a touch too small for my liking, meaning you'll hear their loop point, which generally means that a certain song might get a touch repetitive. But overall, their design is excellent. They match the environments perfectly, and I thoroughly enjoyed them. As far as the narration goes, well, the female lead does an excellent job. I see what you were after. I can't believe someone just left this animal like this. But as mentioned in the main section, some of her lines are repeated so often over runs that they just lose all impact and, on the contrary, can become quite irritating. After around about two or three hours, you will have heard absolutely everything she has to say. Overall for me, I like the visuals of the game, but I dislike the inability to explore the environments you're presented with. And the random generation meant that your left and right choices felt a touch arbitrary. Overall visual score, 15 out of 20. And audio scores, 14 out of 20. The game retails at £20 and has a download size of 4.2 gigs. I've completed it many times already and I think my first completion run probably took me around about two and a half hours, which isn't overly long, is it? Particularly when you consider that the replay value really comes down to how keen you are to explore the different story arcs, and I use that in air quotes, of your different animals. And the reason I use that in air quotes is because they're really not that fleshed out. A box may pop up on the screen saying that one trusts you more now because you followed their instinct. But in terms of the end game, nothing really changes. And I found that as far as story goes, the final moments of the game were a touch anticlimactic and a little bit of a letdown. For what content there is here, I think the price is a touch too high. It would have been perfect at about half this price. So I would say wait for a sale on that one. But that's in no way to say I didn't enjoy my experience with the game. It just doesn't quite meet. It's full potential. I give value 12 out of 20. Get a van, fill it with dogs, go to Alaska, race in the Iditarod dog sled race, and finish. Overall then, The Red Lantern, it's not a bad game. It feels like a walking simulator on a sled, and I feel the potential was here for much more. I like the resource survival management, but again, I'm much more inclined towards having full control to go out and survive in a way that feels a touch more natural. The dogs are excellent, and perhaps the nicest aspect is a relationship you build up with them. But even this felt a touch underdone. The Red Lantern scores a switch up score of 67%. Let me know down in the comments if you'll be picking this one up. And as always, a big thanks to our patrons who support us each and every month. For all things Switch, all the time, keep it Switch up. Cheers, guys. See ya! Do you have those moments that stick out in your mind? When I was a kid, I was told, you are what you do, so choose wisely. I could be an astronaut, a CEO, a painter, a doctor. I could be anything. Hi, I'm supposed to achieve great things. Unfortunately for me, you are also your mistakes. And turns out they tend to remember those more. Hi, I'm a... Uh, I'm a disappointment. So, I've decided to become something else. Something that can't be forgotten. I've got a plan. Get a van, fill it with dogs, go to Alaska, race in the Iditarod dog sled race, and finish. Nothing could take that from me. And things were going to plan. Dogs.